in December of 2015, um, I was unexpectedly diagnosed with ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Everything was so new. Uh, when the time I was diagnosed, I was told I had, I had three to five years to live. And it just really consumed me for several months. Um, I couldn't sleep at night, and when I did fall asleep, I'd wake up. And I, I was just, I had all these worries of what's gonna happen to my family. You know, how, how are we gonna afford this disease? Uh, how long am I gonna be able to work? Uh, how am I gonna support my family? Um, you know, wh wh what's my family gonna do without me? Um, my biggest fear was just what a horrible burden that I'm gonna be in my family someday. Um, or they're gonna have to physically take care of me and, and um, just, just watching the pain in my family um, was very difficult. I wasn't a very productive person, and, um, and I really lost my happiness. Um, you know, but I never questioned why, because um, I know things happen in life and you just deal with them. And I had my faith. I didn't have to go find my faith during this troubled time. The only thing I needed to do was um, to turn to Our Lady for help. And I woke up one day and I was still in this funk and my wife said, you know what? She says, you got to start living again. And you just have to get up and you have to just plan for today and enjoy today. And we'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Going to Lourdes is something I always wanted to do as an adult. Uh, most of my family members have made pilgrimages, my parents and brothers and sisters. I signed up to go to this pilgrimage with uh, the Order of Malta. And every year they make an annual pilgrimage to the Shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes. And they take with them the sick. You know, I, I never imagined I'd go in the capacity as someone who's sick looking, asking for a cure. Uh, I always thought I'd go as someone who's helping, uh, help, helping the sick or volunteering. Um, but it didn't matter to me, I, I, was, I was gonna make this journey, I was excited. I decided before I left that I wanted to go to confession. I wanted to really cleanse myself and prepare myself um, for this pilgrimage. Pilgrimage of a lifetime for me is something I've always wanted to do. The act of uh, going to confession is not something I, I ever enjoy doing. And uh, I hate to admit it, but um, I, I avoid confession at all, all costs. So I probably had been six years that I had been to confession. So I went to our parish priest. Um, he knew the circumstance of what was going on with me and our family. He's, he's good friends with us. I told him, I said, you know, Father, I said, I'm, I'm trying to make the spiritual journey, um, get closer to our Lord. I'm going through this difficult time. And every time I think I'm making a step forward with my faith, I just feel so weighed down. I, I, I just, I feel all my past sins weighing me down. And I just kind of keep reliving all these, all these past sins. I, I just, I, I, I just can't get rid of them. And he looked at me and said, Christian, he goes, we're Catholic. He said, you, do you believe that if you confess your sins, God forgives them that they're gone? I said, oh, yes, I believe that for He said, so what's the problem? Confess your sins, God will forgive them and move on. I said, I know. I said, I just can't. And he said, well, he said, it's the devil holding you down. The devil won't let you release these sins, let them go. And that's holding you back. That's holding you back, getting you closer to God. And I said, okay, Father. So we, uh, we went through, went through uh, the confession, um, gave me an absolution, and, and he said, now, for your penance, I want you to go back out in church. I'd like you to spend about 15 minutes and thank God for all the good things he's done in your life. And it kind of took my breath away for a second. I was like, you know, everything I'm going through, I'm going through all these difficult times, and you want me to go out in church and thank God for everything good he's done? I'm like, wow. So I did. I went out in church, prayed for about 15, 20 minutes, and just recited in my head all the good things God has done in my life. And it was really uplifting. It was really um, a kind of a, a spiritual renewing. So the, the first day we get there, I, I was expecting this hallelujah moment when I got there. Expecting the sun to open up and, and God to come down and grab me, and, and uh, none of that happened. So I, I knelt down and I prayed in the hotel room. And I said, okay, God, here I am. Whatever you want to give me, whatever you want to do to me, whatever you want to tell me for, for the next six days, I am yours. 
Later that night, we had our first mass as a group with the Order of Malta. Went to mass every day, one of the different basilicas in the domain. And when you walk in the Rosary Basilica, uh, the first thing you notice is on the ceiling is just this, this massive mural of Mary. It, it's an image of Our Lady that I've just, I've never envisioned before in my life. She's very young looking, like maybe 12, 13, 14 years old, uh, fair complected, green eyes, red hair, and just a very innocent uh, looking uh, mural. And she has a smirk on her face with her hands out and like she's looking at you. And she's kind of smirking like, I know you, in a friendly way, not in a bad way, I know you. So as the mass proceeded, I just kept staring at this beautiful mural of Our Lady. And I just, I, I could not stop crying. Just tears were, were coming down my face. And um, all of a sudden I felt someone put their hands on my shoulders. And it took my breath away. And I was trying to process in my mind what was, what was going on. And I, I, I couldn't think of anything. My mind was blank. And uh, at that moment, if someone asked me my name, I probably couldn't have told you my name. I just, I couldn't think. But I could feel these large, warm hands on my shoulders. So I just said, Christian, stop, stop thinking. And uh, so I started praying. They, every time I give a talk, I try to describe it. And I don't, I don't know how to describe it. But I saw peace. It was beautiful. And as I'm looking up and I see this beautiful peace, I felt all my worries and all my fears. I've been carrying around, they left me. They were just gone. And I started laughing. <laughs> I was crying and I was, I was laughing. And if somebody saw me, they probably would have thought I was insane. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, they were, they were gone. And then I felt the hands lift off my shoulders. And as they lifted off, I, all my sins left my body. I just felt the weight. And I started laughing again. Near the end of our pilgrimage, uh, my, my sister, the whole time we were there, she kept trying to get me to go to confession. And I said, Ann, I said, I just went to confession about a month ago. I hadn't gone in six years. I think I'm good. <laughs> and, uh, I wait outside, it's my turn to go in, and the confessionals are just these little teeny rooms. So I said, well, Father, I said, I'm, I'm obviously here for confession. I said, but to be honest with you, I have no sins, I have nothing to confess. <laughs> and I said, in all sincerity, Father looked at me and goes, okay, you're gonna have to explain this one to me. Why don't you have any sins? Why don't you think you, have any, you don't have any sins? So I went into my whole explanation of the Rosary Basilica. My experience there, what happened there, so I get done explaining it to him, and again, the confessional's quiet. He's not saying anything. So I, I look up at him, like to say hello, you know, and he's crying. And he's looking at me, and he had a, a tear coming down his face. And he looked at me, and he says, you've received a miracle. He said, what happened to you doesn't happen to many people. I looked at him with excitement, and I said, Father, I said, what's the miracle? You know, I knew what I came for. So what is it? And he looked at me and he smiled and he says, I don't know. I said, that's between you and God. He said, but I do know this. God has a plan for you. He's got a plan for your life. You just have to be open to it. You have to listen to God, but he has a plan for your life. And I looked at him again. I said, I'm thinking this is awesome. I said, Father, what's my plan? And he smiled. He says, I don't know. That's between you and God. So we, we continued to pray, and then he, he said to me, he goes, well, you still want me to absolve you? And I said, yeah, I'm here. Absolve me of my sins anyway, even though I don't have any. <laughs> so uh, he absolved me of my sins, and, and uh, he, he looks at me, he goes, okay, for your penance, I want you to go to the Adoration Chapel um, down the street, and I want you to sit in prayer, and I want you to thank God for everything good he's done in your life. That just blew me away. 
I've had two confessions in seven years, a month apart, and the priest gave me the exact same penance. Thank God for everything good he's done in my life. And I was just, just blown away. When you thank God for everything he's done good in your life, it refocuses you on all the good in your life.